Take and Talk Picks. I'm Rob Kruger, and here we go on Depth of Field for our Fundamental Fridays. That's right. Depth of Field. So what we have here is just some objects, my recording device, a few things, and hey, a camera. And for this one, I put on a long lens because Depth of Field actually has a few things involved. One is aperture. We talked about this. We went over aperture and kind of mentioned that it has a place. It serves a purpose in depth of the field. Now this particular lens does not have the most glorious aperture. It's actually most open at f4 and then it can go as far as f22 when I'm zoomed in fully. So there's not a great range on it. It's not the most wide open aperture or fast lens. That's how we refer to a wide open aperture being a faster lens when it's f2.8 or more open. f2, f1.4, f1.2 even. So take a look around at the different lenses you're interested in purchasing for your gear because the speed of the lens will help your pictures. But aperture is not the only thing, so I don't have to worry about aperture being the problem for the depth of field on this particular camera, which is my Olympus OM-D EM1. And it's a great little mirrorless system, and it's going to do the job for us because the two other things that go into depth of field are focal length, the actual millimeters or length of the lens that it's offered and camera to subject distance. So let me walk you through a few things. Let me get you there. Ooh, change up these settings. They're pretty bad. Awesome. Here we go. Get to an exposure value. That makes sense. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a shallow depth of field, which means a very open aperture. And I'm going to change it up a little bit. So I'm going to do three different shots here for the shallow depth of field and making those three different changes to see how it affects it. So I'm going to try and make the same shot every time, but here we go. We, what we have are the aperture is at f4, the other exposure settings are correct for this scene and this lighting, and I'm going to focus in right, right here on actually the lens cap that I have for this camera. So here we go, and we're going to see a nice, simple, shallow depth of field shot here. Beautiful. There it is. Shallow depth of field on that one. And I'm going to make it even more shallow by zooming in. So, But with zooming in on this lens, it actually reduces my aperture to 5.6. Again, not a big deal. We have the magic of focal length. And that was first one was at 40. Now I'm going to go to 150 millimeters. And with a mirrorless, it's actually two times that for the full frame equivalent. So 80 to now 300. So I'm going to do the same shot. Focus in on that. Ooh, I'm so close. Let me back it up here just to kind of have a similar shot. There we go, focus in, and there's the shot. See, still shallow depth of field. The aperture changed, but we still have a very similar shallow depth of field. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it back down somewhere in the middle so I can open up that aperture just a little bit, all right? And with that in mind, I'm going to get closer. I'm going to move in here, get right up on it, and here we go. Oh, not that close, apparently. This lens has a focusing restriction. There we go. Oh, and there it is. Very nice. So three factors, focal length, camera to subject distance, and our aperture. Now, that's shallow depth of field. When I go open aperture and I get closer in or I zoom in on it, that'll get you shallow depth of field. Now, to get the longer depth of field, you have to do kind of the opposite. You need to be further away from the subject you need to zoom out on that subject, just get away from it, back up on the lens, and you have to have a very small hole in the lens, a very small aperture. So I'm going to close down to f22 for this lens, and that's going to change my shutter speed dramatically. I'm down to like a half a second for the shutter speed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rest it on the table because my camera shake will just ruin the picture. So I'm going to go right here, and what I'm going to do is we have a few layers. So we have this group with camera bag and filters and the lens cap right there, and that's going to stay up front. Oops. Then we're going to, you know what? It's perfect right there. Then we're going to move over to the lens right here. It's a little bit further away, and before we saw those pictures, this was in focus, this was blurry, and this was very blurry. But now we're going to have a sharpness here and even texture and detail back here in this camera bag. So what's going to do that? Well, the aperture will extend the focus from foreground to background. So if I focus here, it will extend it in both directions. But if this part's irrelevant to the picture, what's the point? How do we correct that? Well, focus a little bit smart. Play into the middle of your scene. This is not quite the middle, but it's close. So we're going to focus in on this other lens here, and that will expand 
foreground and background so we can keep texturing detail in all areas. Let's have a look. Here we go. I'm going to do F22. That's all I've really changed. I'm back in my 40 millimeters. Focusing in and yeah, sharp all the way. There it is. Very nice. Now what can I do to change things up? Well, I'm going to I'm going to uh, do that one zoomed in. At uh, uh, we'll go to 70 because I don't want to kill too much of the scene here. I'll do that again because the focal length is going to change it, right? So I'll focus on the lens and it's zoomed in. Oh, hey, that's pretty sharp. But if I zoom out, you know, back up a little bit. There we go. Make sure my sharpness, my focus is on. Go for it. That looks great. And then if I back up even more, I'm going to go for it here. And I'm going to try to hand hold it. This is not smart. Wow. Even the background there, you can't see it completely, but there's a desk and chairs. That stuff is in focus. Play with it. You have to play with it and understand what works for you. A lot of people like that shallow depth of field look, so do it. Do that open aperture. Even with lenses that are for a kit lens, this is not a great aperture, but a kit lens can offer it. If you zoom in and you get closer and you open up your aperture, shallow, shallow, small depth of field, a very small focal plane. You want more in focus? I suggest a tripod because once you go to close down the aperture, you're cutting off light which means a longer shutter speed. So close off that light from the aperture, open up that shutter speed and slow it down so it can be available to capture longer. Put it on a tripod and go. Go away from it. I put it on a table. I didn't even have a tripod today. So put it on a table, put it on a structure that's going to be safe and sound and sturdy for you. And uh, you know, use it to your advantage. That small hole, the longer exposure typically. And uh, yeah, zoom out, step back. You know you're going to get that longer depth of field, the very maximum field of range that you can get. There are a whole other aspect to this to get full depth of field, everything in focus from a certain point beyond. And that is called hyperfocal distance. But today, let's worry about shallow and long depth of field and the few options that you have to making it work for in your favor. Awesome. I'm Rob Kruger, TakenTalkPicks.com. Head over to the site, see what else is there, check out the interviews, the Monday message, and keep joining and following along. We love having you, Photo World. Take care and happy shooting.